Science and religion are so different yet so similar. They share an indistinguishable rigidity and are indifferent to compassion. Both fields fear things they can't decipher. Thus, they try ardently to subdue or mold stuff, as per their beliefs. When they fail to persuade peacefully, they use physical force, as if they fear the unconventional. Melanie Lawrence's film, The Mad Women's Ball, explores a similar thought and depicts it gracefully. The ending is bittersweet as the protagonist flies over the cuckoo's nest, leaving her friends behind her. If you seek to recollect the final moments in detail, let us embark upon a thorough discussion. Spoilers ahead. Is Eugene mentally ill? In this story, you hardly ever know the distinction between sanity and madness, since in late 19th century France, therapists were more like evil scientists. In the bleak atmosphere of the Salpetriere, the first thing one notices is that all the inmates are women, while all the doctors are men. Originally a gunpowder factory, the building was converted by Louis XIV into a hospital, mainly to treat intellectually disabled, psychologically challenged, and epileptic women. In the early examination, head nurse Genevieve declares Eugene is reasonably healthy. We soon come to realize that Eugene possesses psychic powers that are outside the purview of scientific rationality. The women are treated like lab rats by head Dr. Charkett and his team of apparently skilled medical students. Upon protesting, Eugene is prescribed the cold water treatment, followed by the hot water treatment. The doctors also use hypnosis as a cure, and their methods come off as unreliable and even brutal in a 21st century context. After a lousy treatment, Eugene's fellow patient Camille develops partial quadriplegia. The sight breaks Eugene, and as she can see right through the patriarchal facade of decorum and socially acceptable manners, it pains her even more. She accuses Charkett and other doctors of catalyzing insanity rather than curing it, and in turn, she is sent to the claustrophobic old cells of the hospital. After the proof, Genevieve sides with Eugene, but as her case is handed over to cold-hearted nurse Jean, Genevieve finds herself helpless. Jean has a menacing air around her, and at first glance, she comes off as a sociopath. The second glance only solidifies the belief. However, Eugene can break her as well, albeit momentarily. She rightly sees Jean's mother admitted to the same hospital, but it's no secret, according to Jean. When Eugene tells her that she knows what Jean's mother did to her son, Jean breaks into tears. But she shortly gathers herself and begins to torture Eugene instead. She is uneasy with her emotions and her erratic action tells something about a repressed self. By this time, we realize that Eugene has no psychological anomalies whatsoever, she is instead a visionary seer. In the medieval age, madness was revered as a source of prophetic and sublime energy. The situation changed after the Enlightenment, as insanity instantly became recognized as an anomaly to be cured. However, the titular ball at the finale sheds some light on those who actually need to be healed. Dr. Jules coaxes Camilla from the early moments, and his true intentions come to the fore at the ball. Against Camilla's wishes, he takes her to an empty room and tries to force himself on her. Camilla screams and shouts, but the beast in Jules does not let her go. He begins to rape her, but is dissuaded from his diabolical act as Genevieve storms into the room. With these heart-shattering events, Genevieve comes to realize that what Patriarchy is keen to tag as hysteria is the feminine will to assert itself. Concluding Eugene to be perfectly sane, she arranges an escape plan for her. Why does Genevieve help Eugene escape? Genevieve initially treats Eugene the same as others, but after Eugene divulged pertinent truth about Genevieve's sister, the nurse comes to realize Eugene's unique abilities. Following the death of her sister Blandine, Genevieve has written thousands of letters to the deceased. No one can know that, but Eugene seems to see right through Genevieve. The nurse is skeptical at first, but Eugene communicates with Blandine to rightly predict the accident of Genevieve's father, and Genevieve rushes to the house to discover her father bleeding. Genevieve's father urges her to blurt out the miracle that sent her, but when Genevieve tells him the truth, he readily dismisses it and calls Genevieve mad. Dissuaded from her father, Genevieve comes to realize that the disciplinary mechanism of the institution is informed by blind-eyed patriarchy. Therefore, while her father readily dismisses the seemingly irrational miracle, Genevieve puts her faith in Eugene. 
she secretly communicates with Theophile and asks him to come to the ball. She helps Eugene to flee while taking the brunt herself. Now, with the act, she is diagnosed as mentally ill and in a twisted turn of fate, serves her own time in the asylum. Eugene writes a final letter to her, where she urges Genevieve to keep on dancing. Dancing here is also symbolic, since although a 19th century woman has to dance to the tunes of a patriarchal vigilante, she reasserts her artistic freedom through the creative act of performance.